My name is Wilbur Sue. I'm the Director of Heart Rhythm Services at the Banner University Medical Center. And I'm here to discuss polar fit cryo balloon and why size matters. The polar arc system is a very familiar tool set compared to the existing cryo balloon system. And the components of the system includes the smart freeze console that controls the cryo balloon and the injection, the freezing cycle, the polar sheath, which advances the cryo balloon into the intended target, polar RX, the actual cryo balloon catheter, and it's a 20 millimeter design, and we'll talk about the 31 millimeter option. And the polar map, which is the mapping catheter coming in front of the catheter to monitor time to isolation. And the typical cryo balloon procedure still remains fairly similar. While it's a similar procedure, the components of the procedure uh, tool set is improved. Starting with the catheter design, we have the cryo balloon, which actually is able to stay with a constant pressure. And that is important to avoid phenomena like the pop out and it's able to determine the uh, occlusion as, as is intended. The sheath itself is also being improved so that the, between the dilator and the sheath is actually a very smooth transition for transeptal access and be able to bend to a very uh, high degree of um, uh, angle for reaching you know, different ang uh, target uh, pulmonary vein. The temperature profile that's seen with the new cryo balloon is actually fairly consistent. And the similar freezing profile, similar refrigerant freezing the anterior half of the cryo balloon. And the workflow for the console is being optimized to look at the uh, ablation time, record the time to isolation, and is controllable by the foot pedal. And similar, the mapping catheter in front of the cryo balloon to be able to visualize the time to isolation. For the cryo balloon, the, the major difference here is that compared to the Medtronic Arctic Front Advance, where the initial injection and ablation would, would mean a significant rise in intra balloon pressure. What that translates to is that the typical occlusion that we see at the beginning of the initial occlusion would often shift or pop out. And if you do not monitor that transition by repeat angiography or intracardiac echo, uh, the typical complaint that we see is that even though you have a good occlusion initially, the ablation is actually ablating parts that are actually being uh, shifted, and therefore you would not have the uh, isolation that we intended. Compared to that of the Boston Scientific Polar RX, is able to stay with a constant temperature. Therefore, during the inflation, the assessment for occlusion and the ablation itself, it actually does not shift, and the freezing occurs as with a constant pressure and be able to monitor the occlusion as is during the ablation. So what you see is what you get in the occlusion. Here's an example of the video showing that with the Medtronic inflated balloon, that the size actually does shift to the 28 millimeter as the ablation occurs. Therefore, it can shift the occlusion. And cryo balloon being a, a very contact dependent energy source, any shift and leak that occurs you know, after the ablation started would result in a inability to isolate with a single shot intention. The design of the Boston Scientific cryo balloon polar uh, RX uh, has the optional polar fit then polar fit by design by uh, changing the back pressure is able to shift the balloon size between a 28 millimeter diameter to a 31 millimeter. So what that translates to though, is a significantly larger surface area that can go come in contact with the freezing. 
And as we know, as we know that the crowd balloon is very uh, contact dependent to be able to create a lesion. And the alternative sizes that we can choose between 28 and 31 during the procedure is able to give us more option to get that uh, complete occlusion so that a one shot, single shot isolation where we monitor the time to isolation is a greater possibility. And when we look at the increased surface area and where we can actually have better contact, certainly we have a more enteral situation and we'll show examples of this. So the initial ablation uh, of initial inflation of the crowd balloon uh, for the initial uh, inflation for uh, is always uh, targeted 28 millimeter. And after 28 millimeter is achieved, then we have the option to expand it to 31 millimeter. So for uh, option of the, uh, of the initial of inflation to 28, if we notice that they does not cover the entire antrum, or we have a small leak, we can always have the option to expand it to 31. Slightly higher pressure, but it still stays constant throughout the ablation. And this will allow us to have the option to uh, explore how the different size, different pressure fit the variable antrum. Compared to the uh, Medtronic cryo balloon, even the polar fit, when we expand it to 31, is still a much lower pressure. So the balloon is more compliant to be able to get the best contact. Here's a good example of a left superior pulmonary vein occlusion. So you pay attention to the initial occlusion on the video that started out as a 28 and what we did here is have a continuous contrast injection as we expanded from 28 to 31 slowly. You can notice that you notice that initial uh, occlusion, while it's still very good, we can actually use the option of a larger cryo balloon for a more antral occlusion. What we see here is that occlusion is maintained and compared to pre and post expansion you can actually see with the anatomical landmarks that this is a further back in occlusion, a further back engagement. Therefore, this will translate to a better intro modification. And hopefully that's, this will ultimately lead to a better clinical success. Here's another uh, example. And this one is at the right superior pulmonary vein with a dual decapolar catheter up in the pacing portion for the phrenic nerve pacing. And as this right superior pulmonary vein is uh, expanded, again, from a 28 millimeter, and we have con continuous contrast injection to monitor how it expands to a 31 millimeter. And you can see that slowly grow and maintain occlusion. And here we can also see the pre and post of how using the, the existing anatomical landmark, uh, this is a more proximal engagement in the right superior pulmonary vein, this is even more important. As we know, one of the complications we do see with crowd balloon is that if it's deeply seated in the right superior pulmonary vein, we will typically uh, worry more about phrenic nerve injury. As the balloon uh, engagement is more osteo with the 31 millimeter, we can imagine this being further away from the phrenic nerve, therefore reduce the risk of phrenic nerve injury and have a better intro modification. So here's another example with the expanded balloon. And sometimes depending on the anatomy of the uh, crowd balloon uh, and how it engages the pulmonary vein antrum, you can often see that the uh, tubular portion of it, if it's a shallower angle, this actually can have a much more antral modification and movement. And here is an example of the left inferior pulmonary vein, where with the baseline, we may even see that there may be a little more inferior leak to this pulmonary vein. And 
it is not unusual with a very sharp demarcation that 28 millimeter balloon, you can even notice on ice that there's a leak, you know, often inferiorly. And interestingly, you can see that as we expand it, even though it's a smaller vein, the sharper angle between the pulmonary vein and the atria for 31 millimeters sometimes even fits better. So this becomes a better way for the balloon to engage the antrum as a single shot, you know, single isolation device. And having that option even for smaller vein would and then still translate to a better option, a better chance of a uh, complete circumferential ablation at once and avoiding the need of segmental approaches. And here again, showing the uh, right superior pulmonary vein, where we can see that it can be very deeply seated uh, with the uh, right superior vein at the 28 millimeter compared to that uh, 31. And even using that, that pacing catheter as a reference, you can see how more antral this is uh, seated, seeing it further away from the phrenic nerve. When we look at our short series of the polar fit pa the patients, where we have both 28 and 31 millimeter available, we can keep track of when we intend to uh, isolate and occlude both the, the, uh, the veins by both the optional 28 and 31 millimeter. It is noticed that about a third of the patient that we can see that really 28 and 31 both works. A small percentage, around 15% of the patients, now neither 28 or 31 can be occluded. And this is, of course, make note that we don't just deep seat the balloon and we look for a very osteo occlusion. And the vice versa, sometimes it can be occluded by 31 millimeter, not the 28, or the 28 millimeter, but not the 31. But most important, when you have this both option of 28 and 31 millimeter balloon in the same procedure in this, you know, without uh, changing catheter, we can see that uh, if you only have the 28 millimeter option, about 63% of pulmonary vein will be fully occluded at very antral location without uh, uh, you know, significantly deep seating the catheter, which you definitely want to avoid. And with the additional 31 millimeter option, then that chance of a complete circumferential, a good grade four occlusion then increases to 85% plus, where this can have a single shot, very antral pulmonary vein isolation. We break down the pulmonary veins just by the left superior, left, right superior, left inferior, or the right, right, superior, uh, right inferior vein. We can see that now, there are significant increase in the option of increasing the uh, chance of uh, pulmonary vein isolation, complete isol uh, occlusion with a 31 millimeter option. But of course, surprisingly, what actually is most uh, increased is the left inferior pulmonary vein. Uh, you know, as we show the example, that sometimes that sharp, de sharp demarcation, even the option of having a flatter, wider balloon, sometimes occlude the vein better. And with the selectable size, you know, between the 28 and 31 millimeter balloon, the freezing area is actually very similar. So typically, if you haven't tried it, we can put that balloon under saline and actually be able to freeze. You can see the ice cap, and the similar ice cap can be seen by both at uh, 28 versus uh, 31 millimeter balloon. And using the thermal imaging, you can also see that temperature profile is actually very, very similar. And using this uh, option, the single shot pulmonary vein isolation at each vein becomes easier. It has the option to try out different sizes to ensure the, the high likelihood of single pulmonary vein isolation. And being able to monitor this as the time to isolation can be easily seen when you have perfect uh, circumferential occlusion. I give you a better sense of if that is a good uh, pulmonary vein isolation is where a single shot would you know, actually uh, provide a durable long-term isolation. 
and the right superior pulmonary vein being further back using the 31 millimeter balloon, likely we'll see less risk of phrenic nerve injury as well. And as you're further back, what we end up seeing is that the achieve or the mapping catheter, the polar map, will be able to see the uh, time to isolation better. And the ability to uh, look at the time to isolation, you know, if it's a very quick isolation, this will be able to record the ability to, for us to tailor this. If you have a very short time to isolation, potentially reduce the, uh, the, uh, the overall ablation time and therefore reduce the risk of collateral damage. And of course, without having to do segmental isolation, this will also reduce the procedure time and the central isolation hopefully will lead to a better clinical success of freedom from atrial fibrillation. Thank you very much.